So I've been asked um, more than once, three times in fact, if I could do a workshop tour. Um, I've resisted it because my workshop's tiny for the most part, it's messy, uh, which is why most of my videos are quite tight on the Zoom. But, you know, um, let's give it a go and see where we end up. So I'm very fortunate that my workshop is in the back of my in-law's garden, which is quite a size, there's a little bit of it, you can see down there, it's the greenhouse. And graciously, they've allowed me to set up in this double stable. I started in this half, moved into this half, and now that my wife works with me, moved back to this half. So uh, it's quite a tight space, but it works. Now outside we've got this. This is a market store. Used sometimes for medieval shows and bits and pieces. We keep getting these pallets turn up. Uh, every time my wife orders some copper, I'm not sure what to do with them quite yet, but we'll figure it out. So we have oxygen propane for my Oxyprop 1. That goes through a gap down in the floor that you can't see and pops into the workshop. This is my sister-in-law's idea of a joke. Because every time she turned up, I was busy sewing and not working. So anyway, for dramatic effect, I've closed the door actually locking my wife in there. So this side of the workshop is my wife's side, which is why it's so unbearably messy. That's down to the fact that, there she goes, this is down to the fact that she probably does more work than me whilst I'm busy faffing about making um, videos. What she makes is things like this. So there you go. You can find her at Greenleaf Artworks. There's a plane going over, that's handy. So we're right near a airbase. There you go. So she makes flowers. There's all of her first ones that she's done, particular ones that she keeps. I'll show you the first knife I ever made and you'll see which one of us is probably the better artisan. But at the moment, she's busy making a thistle, which has gone somewhere. There it is. Ta-da! A thistle. So, to my side of the workshop. So I've got this belt sander. Really, really useful. I don't know how or why I did, with it, did without it for as long as I did. But to the first and most important piece of workshop equipment up here, there we go, the radio. We've got one rule in the workshop, it's my workshop, my radio. But opinions may differ on that between me and my wife. Anyway, as with all workshops, you've got the shelf filled with stuff of which I probably only use about 20%. The most used and useful part is here, all my chisels. I use almost on a daily basis. Files pushed in there because I can't bear to chuck them away, but they're useless. Some drill bits and assorted junk, which does come in handy someday. I'm reliably informed by everyone that's ever worked in a workshop. But there you go. So you've got the shelf, the workbench. Uh, these are the tools. So one of my videos, the foremost used tools in my workshop. I use these on a daily basis. Poor things need a bit of TLC, they never seem to get at it. A strategically positioned, move my apron, a bassinet, which is underway, has been for quite a while now because it's just for myself, so it's whenever I can fit some time in. And one half for a pair of greaves, um, the other half are packed away in the van because I've just come back from a show where I was trading at Hatfield House. Uh, the mask there is because I don't have adequate or any extraction for when I'm working on this little thing, which is where I do most of my polishing. Uh, so I wear the mask. Absolutely important to do that. Don't fool yourself into thinking you'll be okay because you only get a little bit of coughing. You are making yourself very ill over time. Anyway, the underside of the workbench, as with everybody's, again, one little bit that I use a lot. You can see by my fantastic sliding drawer that no longer slides, I am no woodworker. But these things here, these are all the various stakes that I use. You can see in the videos that I do, they all, they all have a purpose and a plan and a reason. There you go. You get the idea. Ooh, just pick that up. And underneath I've got a shelf which one day I'll clean. Because I don't think I've used anything down there in about that long. Some patterns. Because I ran out of space up here in my folder for patterns. In all seriousness, probably one of the more important pieces of equipment. Fire extinguisher, 
fire extinguisher. Oh yes. So anyway, where did we get to? We got to the cleaning bit over here. You swing around, uh, this is the messy bit that I try not to look at. I tried to avoid on the films because of the bright green tubs. I just think they suddenly draw your attention. We've got some jobs on the go there. Helmet and some legs. Some cleaning equipment and a pillar drill. And the not so used hammers or the bigger ones that I couldn't fit around my anvil. Just there. And then right down here I've got all of the stuff that I don't use very regularly. But when you need them, they're really handy. Uh, leather dies and surface treatment stuff there. Spray cans, uh, spray glues, all that sort of stuff. A steak, which you've seen in a few films, some pitch, ready for a job that I've got to do. A large dishing form. So heavy, it's heavier than my anvil. You never think it was, but it is. And this little beast. Now, when I started, I made this because I was working in my shed. And it was handy to be able to interchange tools. But now these two guys, pretty much in permanent residence. Nice and stable, got some space down here, I've got a ball peen and uh, ball stake in there at the moment. And there are other tools that used to live in here, but now they've got their own places to go. Really, really handy. Just made out of a bit of oak. And in the UK we call it CLS, a 3 by 2 or 2 but uh, yeah, I think it's 3 by 2 something like that. And that has lasted me a good decade. Obviously stumps are far better, but this is why I don't use this to change tools now because I was very fortunate to pick up a swage block and they're awesome pieces of kit. If you're serious about your armour and all blacksmith and whatever, get yourself a swage block because you can put tools in and out of it. It's heavy, it's got a lovely return weight, it doesn't shift, it doesn't go anywhere. So I've just been working on those greaves, that's why this is in there. And I've got my tools that I use for greave making. And there's a small selection of other plates and stakes and forms that go on here when I'm working on it. Scrap bin that one day I plan on trying to experiment with to see if I can melt all of that down into another little bar of steel or some sort of metal, mystery metal I suppose. But I never quite get around to it, but it should be good fun. I'm planning on doing it in the winter. A brass pile for decoration and steel. Lots of different steel. I I have to write on them what gauge they are, because I'm hopeless at gauging it by eye. So I have to measure it, and then just make sure it's written on there from then on. I've got all sorts of steels in there, high carbons, mild steels, uh, stuff in the corners, a bit of stainless, the steak knife material, etc. And some wire I'm turning into buckles. Now, I have been asked about heating, so here you go. I'll do a proper piece on this, because they're quite straightforward to make. I bought the downpipe from a chap in Europe. It was on eBay, I'll put his details below, and I attached this to it. Made this, and you can see, if you look carefully, it's just scaffold and scaffold clips. Because then I can adjust those if I need to, but I never have. I can swing it out, swing it in, if it's in the way. Again, which I never have, and I use that an awful lot. Uh, early, door, early doors grieve, yeah, which I did wrong, I don't know about years ago now and I just use it